Hi, my name is Matt Robus, and I am a carver, and the title of the show is Birds of Wood. The idea here, just like with the old decoy carvers, is to do just enough work in terms of carving and painting to show the bird that you're trying to portray. And I'm not one of those people who are very skilled and take a lot of time and carve and, and burn every little feather vein into the bird. The idea here is to produce a decorative object, or in the case of the working decoys, a, a, an object that's a tool with minimal detail but maximum feel of what the bird really looks like in the wild. This is a pair of long-tailed ducks that are flying, and the reason I'd like to talk about these is that they're actually the first birds that I've carved with spread wings. Um, normally, my carving has been you know, literal hunting decoys like this old or uh, long-tailed duck drake or uh, this uh, white-tailed or white-winged scoter over here. But I just decided I wanted to try something different and was looking for something maybe to put on a wall and so decided to, to carve these guys. This is the drake long-tailed duck and this is the hen. This is a female long-tailed duck in winter plumage. In the summer she'd be a lot browner. And this duck behind her is the male long-tailed duck with the very long tail. Um, these tails on these working birds are made actually out of pieces of plastic pipe in order to be durable. If you made something that skinny out of wood it wouldn't last long uh, being out in a hunting situation. And so we have another drake long-tailed duck here and this is a uh, white-winged scoter. Sea ducks are not only beautiful but they are you have to admire them because of the environment they live in. They're out in the water in you know indescribably harsh conditions all winter long with high seas. Um, they're diving down to get their food at depth and uh, I just really really think they're pretty amazing animals and have always really enjoyed being around them. And uh, the thing I love about this bird is that I finally, after carving many dowagers over the years, finally achieved the feel of their kind of dumpiness on the ground and yet their gracefulness um, they are beautiful birds to watch in the air and uh, this just to me kind of exemplifies what I'm trying to do with a decoy style of carving even though this bird is not something that is allowed to be hunted anymore. The, the purpose here is to kind of replicate um, the best of the old carving style for a bird that used to be hunted but now this would be just a, a purely decorative object and it's just one of those ones that turned out um, better than I could have expected. I really like the form on this one. Okay, so this collection is a group of four yellow legs carvings and it's sort of my homage to some of the best carvers um, of the old days. Back before 1914, shorebirds were um, allowed to be hunted in North America and yellow legs were some of the birds that decoys were produced for. And three of the four of these decoys are based on historic yellow legs decoys that are either in collections or in museums. And then the fourth one, I'm stepping completely into a class that I don't belong in. This is a yellow legs that I've carved uh, with an open mouth as, as if it's calling. And they all have the same type of paint job, which is my paint job, not the paint job that these guys would have done. But I just really wanted to include those old timey 
postures by master decoy makers into some of my carving. When I was asked to carve this pelagic cormorant um, and started looking into it and looking at poses and figuring out how to put it together, I just became aware of what a beautiful bird it is. Um, and I think that not only is it an, a, a very nice bird, but the carving just turned out really nicely. And so I'm, I'm pretty proud of this one. There's not there are no uh, flat surfaces on any bird, but on this particular bird, there are so many curves, they can't even be counted. And, you know, looking, trying to figure out how to cut out the block of wood, the blocks of wood on a bandsaw, so you'd end up not only with a curve in the neck that went in this direction, but also the curve that goes in this direction was a bit of a task and took some planning. This bird also was the first time that I had to make web feet. And so these klutzy looking web feet, which are very much like what the actual klutzy feet on the bird look like, um, were my first time experimenting with that. And I think they were, they're quite successful as well. This is a gathering of great blue herons. Um, one of the more popular things that I've been doing over the years is making lawn ornaments out of uh, red cedar so that it's pretty weather, weather resistant. And there's no species of bird that has more different interesting poses than the great blue heron. And we have a pretty good representation of what I've done so far uh, regarding their poses here. We have everything from a hunkered great blue heron in, in the foreground and then moving back this direction towards me is a standing kind of a relaxed pose of a great blue heron. And then the next one is an alert great blue heron that is thinking of maybe flying off. And then behind me we have a stalking great blue heron that is making a move on some sort of prey. Mm -hmm. who comes to the show will see that there is everything from a hummingbird to full-sized great blue herons and a lot of different bird families um, and genera in between. So I just am happy and excited to show off kind of the breadth of this work to people.